Good reputation, we've talked a little bit about this. The deacon in, in Acts chapter six is said to have, go search out from amongst yourself a man of good reputation. So you ask around, what, are your, what is this person like in the place where you serve? What are, what are they like in your campus, in your ministry? Talk to me about that person. It's actually part of our responsibility to go on, what, what is this person like? Do they have a good reputation? Or are there people that are like, no, 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 no I don't want that guy to be a leader. No, no, no. Um, the elder in 1 Timothy uh, 3, it says that they're supposed to have a good reputation with outsiders. Deacons is just like people in the church. Elders is actually like, what do your atheist neighbors think of you? What does your Buddhist coworker think of you? Um, you know, do, do they have nice things to say about you, or are you just the the mean, nasty Christian that 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 you know always beats them over the head with the Bible and talks down to them, like tell them tell them they're going to hell all the time, like like is that is that is that their impression of you? Um, or hypocrisy. You know, just that's just one of those things. So building a good reputation takes takes time. And when you mess up, and we sin, we do something, we, we violate somebody, it can actually take a time to restore that reputation. And that's actually something that um, we've we've talked a lot about in church leadership circles about what happens when a church leader sins. What happens when a pastor falls? Can they ever be restored? And and there's a there's a great, um, there's a book by a guy named um, Gordon McDonald, okay? And he was a pastor who had an affair and felt horrible about it. And he went and told his wife and said like, look, I, I'm so sorry that him and his wife went and told the board of elders. He calls, in the book he calls the, the board of elders and his wife, he calls them his angels, all right? And it's a great, it's, I forget the title of the book, but it's Gordon McDonald's story. It's, it's a phenomenal story. So he was a pastor of a large church. So now he goes and says, all right, I'm going to, um, whatever you guys say. And they, the board of elders got together with his wife and says, all right, so your marriage is volatile right now. Why don't you guys take a couple months? We'll pay for you to be on a supervised sabbatical in, a, in, a, in like a, a conference center where you can get counseling and like work on your marriage so that your marriage can be strengthened. So when you come back and we tell, tell the body, you're ready for the questions that come and all the stuff, because right now you're not ready for that. So they went, they went away, came back after a couple months, strong. They walked out, Mr. and Mrs. McDonald come out hand in hand, and he tells the congregation, he says, uh, uh, folks, I just want you all to know that I'm confessing to you all publicly that I've, I've fallen, I had an affair, and I've disqualified myself as your pastor. Um, for the last couple months, my wife and I have been, you know, this and that, and here I'm here to, to tell you publicly, and, and I want you to know that, that we're doing well. We, we're under the guidance and discipleship of our, of our elders, and, you know, if you have any questions, talk to them, but we're gonna, we're gonna start going to another church and uh, work on our marriage for the next six months to a year, and, you know, we love you and we pray. So they walk off. So now, over the next years, and I'm, I'm par you know, now you don't have to buy the book. Thanks, Dave. You're a spoiler alert. <laughs> but over the next few years, his, their reputation began to be restored because of how well they were doing it. And they started, he started to get offers to go speak at conferences and stuff. And he never, he never took it upon himself to say yes. He says, well, you got to check with the angels first. So they, and the angels would say, no, not yet. We don't think it's time yet. And then that's the, that's the answer. He submitted himself with humility to the elders and, and his wife. And then one day an offer came and he gave it to the angels and they said, hey, you know what, I think it's time. So then he says, okay, now I'll start praying about it. And the Lord said, no, it's not time yet. So he wouldn't even start praying about it until the angels said yes. So then at a certain point later in time, long story short, he wound up getting an offer to, uh, to be an assistant pastor at a church the angel said yes, and to him the Lord said yes, and he wound up being restored as a pastor. So it's a long, drawn-out process of humility and just being, being, allowing God to heal your reputation. Now there's a um, there's another guy who was, I think it was in the 1970s or 80s, I think early 80s. Who remembers the name Jim Baker? 
Everybody remembers Jim Baker, right? What did Jimmy go down for? He had some issues, didn't he? Adultery, embezzlement, or, or uh, extortion. What, what all the different charges that, that were brought against him, he went, wound up going to prison. And so, in prison, Billy Graham started to minister to him. And one day he was at, he was, his job was to clean the latrines, the bath, the toilets in the bathroom in the prison. And the, they knock on the door, the guard says, hey, uh, somebody's here to see you. And he's like, I'm not seeing anybody. I'm Look at me, I'm covered in pee, right? It's, it's like, it's Billy Graham, I think you wanna come. He goes, I am not going to see Billy Graham right now. But oh, Billy kept coming to see him. And over time, they started to develop a relationship. And Billy Graham wrote that Jim Baker was on his knees and repented, like with tears, just like about how horrible he felt about everything that he did. Now, he got out of prison. He never accepted any kind of pastoring job, never tried to get back into public ministry. He did some speaking engagements. He wrote a couple books. Um, according to Billy Graham, I, I don't know, I don't know Jim Baker, and I don't know how he had wound up, but, but according to Billy Graham, this man was had repented, but the first thing that we think of when you hear the name Jim Baker is what? All the bad stuff, right? So is his reputation restored? No, his reputation was not restored. Whereas Gordon McDonald, based on the way he handled himself and did everything, his congregation it like wanted him back because it was like this is how sin uh, somebody should handle sin with humility. And so God restored, God can restore anybody's reputation. It's between God and that person. But when you start thinking about that name, what is the first thing that comes to mind? What's the reputation that's there? That reputation is, uh, is very, very important. And it takes time to build. It takes time to repair, uh, especially when you're in leadership, the higher you are in leadership, the harder you fall with your reputation. So just as something to be, uh, aware of as we get into public leadership.